The Crush Bar at Covent Garden in 1966, when I auditioned for the role of Oberon. It was a very hot day and they were all very sleepy. It was after lunch. You know what it's like after lunch on a hot day. And I swept in and sang to them and they sort of, Britain got excited. That was for the English opera group who were mounting a new production because the old one had got rather tired that the art garden were doing and the garden was kind of scrappy. He got the idea for alto, tenor and bass from the, um, from the Death in Venice. It sort of fermented in his mind. He wanted to set the text of, of Journey of the Major but couldn't really think how to do it and then it all sort of fell into place after that. Um, he did mean arrangement of Sweeter Than Roses and then the most crucial thing was he did say to me, you have vindicated my choice of countertenor for the role of Oberon and I would like to rewrite some of it for you. And it never happened. He said, you realize why it's at such a limited range because Alfred didn't like going above a B flat. There's one alternate D, but basically Alfred only had, at that stage, uh, wanted to do a B flat low, B flat high. And that was it. And he said, I do accept the fact that the role is a little bit limited. But he said, you know, that's, I'm happy with it, but I'm thinking perhaps there might be a possibility to rewrite some of it. Well, I said, if you do, don't touch our Noah Bank. Oh yes, there were plans to do other things very much, but they never got beyond the talk talking stage. In fact, I did his last recording with him. I did Sweeter Than Roses by Purcell, which he had arranged for me. And he played the piano part, it's, it's on a Decca recording, and then went into hospital. Um, after a performance at Covent Garden, Richard Rodney Bennett presented himself in my dressing room and I gra graciously received him. And he said, I would like to write you a song cycle. So I said, what? What? And duly, this song cycle to text by uh, Edith Sitwell and others arrived called Times White a Series. And he wrote it for lute and voice. Now, it, it required a lot of harmonics and lutes don't do harmonics. So I was rather naughty and did it with guitar. Um, and um, what, who was the, well, I think it was OUP who me over the coals for it, but it was a, a strange piece. You know, P, uh, Richard Ronnie Bennett was Richard was a bit of a chameleon. He could write in all sorts of different styles. You ne would never say that's Richard Ronnie. Anyway, it was quite clever. Some of it was very lovely. Anyway, I did the first performance in the Jubilee Hall at the Albra Festival. And unbeknownst to me, Ben and Peter were sitting in the auditorium. It's the last time I saw Ben, actually. And afterwards, that, that sort of yard outside, they came out and Ben looked at me and said, a bit sparse, isn't it? So I said, oh. <laughs> he said, good luck, and off he went. <laughs> I, I liked Peter Max, Max a lot, but there again, he didn't really understand. I mean, the, the priest confessor in Tavernor, I had to transpose it all because it was too high. He had me singing on a top F sharp, which some people would do. I, I never had a top F sharp in my life. So we, he, and Max wasn't bothered, but it was an impossibly difficult. You know, the, there were some hilarious moments at Covent Garden. Ray Herrings was in it. And the beginning of act one, in those days, they used the, the, the tabs, and the tabs came down, and Ray Herring said, sorry, I've still got two pages to go. <laughs> this is the dress rehearsal for the Friends of Covent Garden. And then another time, Ted Downs, alas, no more, said, trumpet, you're 100 bars out. And it, a lot of the music sounded like a tape being played backwards. Do you know that funny sound? The orchestra thought it was hilarious. They loved it because it was just totally what they hadn't done. And I had to sing a bit with Frank Edgerton pulling a statue of the Virgin Mary to pieces. Right. <laughs> and it was all, it was much, a piece much given to hysterical laughing upstage. Oh, I've also done a very funny opera in Paris by a man called Georges Aperquis. Have you heard of him? From L'Ensemble Intercontemporain, Contemporain, which was to be conducted by Rattle, but he rattled back to us. And we did it at the Opera Comique in Paris. And it was, it was called Je vous dis que je suis mort. And I was le mort. Mm. And I kept coming up and down on a coffin and singing and then disappearing again. I couldn't remember any of it. I had to write it on here. You could sing anything. At one point, Jilly Knight had to sing an aria and I had to take her, pull her teeth out while she was singing. So they gave her a whole new set of dentures. So she looked like Les, Les Dawson. A whole new set of dentures, which was detachable. And she was singing. <laughs> 
Boom, and I pull out, pull her teeth out. Ah, les dents, les dents. And it was all in French, of course. Um, François, that baritone, it was French people mostly, but that was his hysteria time. And I love cats. And there was a lovely cat in the opera company called Albert, who I took a great shine to. And Albert would come for cuddles down under the stage. And of course, he was riddled with fleas. I think um, I gave the Countess Anna voice a new dimension because I could make a lot of noise. I didn't sound with a little tiny squeak. I thought, I'll come on and be butch. No, I think I gave it a new dimension, but that's all gone now because Yeston and people and Michael Chance I do it so well. Michael, Michael was it's wonderful. Michael's a stage creature. I'm not a, I'm not a natural actor. I tend to come on as if I'm announcing the last train. But I always took the point in Handel opera that they were engaged with their voices, not for their acting abilities. I, I'm not talking about contemporary opera, but if you're doing Alcina or one of those wonderful Handel pieces, they wanted to hear lovely singing. They didn't want to hear somebody coming in and turning cartwheels. Yeah. If you couldn't sing the part, they didn't want to know, did they? It's as simple as that. Apart from Carne Barana, I love bread and butter pudding and cream. Or custard. I love bread and butter because it's nursery food. It makes me think of, you know, n nursery food.